Our story unfolds at the Academy of Superpower Abilities, where our protagonist, Ning Feng, casually plays games on his phone while walking. Immersed in an online game, he's caught off guard when a palm strike hits him squarely in the face. Wang Yu, confronting him, inquires about his actions and reminds him of the impending awakening exam. Instead of preparing, he is found indulging in games. Ning Feng chuckles, questioning if it isn't a balance of work and rest. He shares with her that at 18, he expects to awaken into a modest one or two star profession at best. Leaning closer, he admits he's nothing like her, who awakened a five star profession at 16, pondering aloud why he should exert himself when he could simply ride on her coattails. Wang Yu, visibly irked, grabs him by the neck, insisting he'll have her support, much to his discomfort. Observers note Wang Yu's return from special training, marveling at her as a prodigy their province hasn't seen in years. Her beauty, wealth, and talent set her apart. They then spot Ning Feng, attempting to retrieve his phone, questioning his identity. It's revealed he's Ning Feng the school's notorious underachiever on the verge of turning 18 without having awakened any abilities. As Wang Yu drags him away, onlookers, frustrated, ponder how someone of her stature could associate with him. Rumors of their childhood friendship circulate, questioning how he, an orphan, could match her stature. In Blue Star, a world where games blend with reality, Individuals over the 16th of May awaken their abilities and embark on adventures. An announcement reminds the students that the next awakening miracle could be among them. Ning Feng, in line for his third exam attempt, wonders about Wang Yu's seriousness. The instructor announces that called students should proceed to the testing area for assessment, mentioning the reward of basic equipment for successful awakenings and preparation for practical tests. As Ning Feng's name is called, his peers tease him for his close following of Wang Yu, despite his unawakened status. Approaching the instructor, Kai Wai, she reassures him not to be nervous and instructs him to place his hand on the crystal. Despite low expectations, he's astonished when the crystal illuminates with a blue light, indicative of the magic system, leaving everyone, including himself, surprised. Disregarding the student's laughter, he anticipates his profession's star level. When the system reveals a one-star profession and the mud marsh technique, Kai Wai and the students express pity and ridicule, respectively. Ning Feng's lack of response prompts Kai Wai to repeat her inquiry about his awakened skill. Misinterpreting his silence as disappointment, she hands him his equipment, directing him to prepare for the next stage. Walking away, Ning Feng contemplates the system's announcement of his complete awakening and acquisition of passive abilities, dark kinship and mystery gift. Dark kinship would protect him from dark power's backlash, allowing forbidden spell use without cost. Mystery gift grants him a weekly forbidden spell cast without consumption. He ponders the implications of possessing such powers in a world where dark power and forbidden spells are highly significant. Curious about the meaning and future of his mud marsh techniques transformation. The system had just announced the completion of his transformation. The mud marsh technique had evolved into the forbidden curse, foul earth shell, leaving him bewildered and concerned about the implications. He knew that terms like darkening and forbidden spells carried ominous connotations, and with the practical test imminent, he hoped for no complications. The instructor explained that the test would involve groups of 50 entering a realm to battle monsters, helping them acclimate to their newfound skills. Team formations and aggression towards one another were prohibited, with unmanned drones overseeing the exercise. Kaiwai urged everyone to familiarize themselves with their abilities promptly, assuring them of their privacy. Ning Feng's active skill, Foul Earth Shell, was revealed as a dark forbidden spell capable of summoning dark power from another realm to create a protective barrier, also able to obliterate nearby foes. The dangerous sound of it made him worry about the consequences of its use. As they were instructed to enter the arena, Ning Feng panicked, seeking an explanation from the system. Upon entering a sunny forest through a portal, 
Students began deploying their skills against goblins. Ningfeng, lacking offensive abilities, opted for concealment, unaware of a drone monitoring him from above. A spectator, Captain Zhu, questioned Ningfeng's inaction. Kai Wei defended him, noting his late awakening and health issues, alongside his purely defensive skill set. Captain Zhu suggested dismissing Ningfeng from the exam, doubting his potential as an adventurer. Suddenly, the observation was interrupted by a drone attack, prompting an alert over unusual power fluctuations within the realm. Captain Zhu ordered an immediate investigation. Meanwhile, in the arena, after the drone was destroyed, Ning Feng found himself encircled by goblins, led by a formidable goblin urging rebellion against their invaders. Ning Feng saw this chaos as an opportunity to test the forbidden spell, summoning undead forces. He astonished the goblin leader and disrupted their assault. Back at the station, a dark power surge was detected, hinting at a threat of king-level magnitude or higher. Kai Wei pondered the presence of such a formidable entity in an exam setting. In the midst of the turmoil, Ning Feng unleashed his undead minions. Their grotesque appearance and lethal efficacy against the goblins left him both amazed and repulsed. As he earned experience for each goblin slain, the goblin leader, stunned by the overwhelming darkness, questioned Ning Feng's nature. This sequence of events underscores Ning Feng's unexpected mastery over a powerful and forbidden skill, setting a dramatic turn in the narrative and hinting at the challenges and revelations that lie ahead. Realizing his movements were slowing down, the leader shouted for the undead not to come any closer, but to no avail, the undead swarmed and defeated it. The system then notified Ning Feng that he had vanquished the Goblin Vanguard, awarding him 6,000 experience points. Moments later, his character information appeared. His class was Mage. His level had skyrocketed to 10. His health and strength were at 10, agility at 8, and spirit at 20, with a total of 12 experience points remaining. Amazed by the rapid advancement of 10 levels in a single encounter, unprecedented compared to the one or two levels usually gained in past practical tests. He pondered the unusual presence of elite monsters in the exam. His attention was soon drawn to items glowing on the ground, remnants of the elite monster. He discovered two items of orange quality. The Vanguard Mark, a consumable item that added 10 points to his agility permanently, and the Shadow Butcher's Claw, requiring level 20, offering boosts to strength, agility, attack speed, critical hit rate, and a chance to trigger combos, with three slots for enhancements. Recognizing these orange quality items as epic treasures of significant value, he was thrilled by the prospect of selling them for a substantial sum, buoyed by the ease of leveling up and the potential wealth to be gained. His excitement was abruptly cut short by Captain Zhu's command to immediately halt the test and evacuate using teleport scrolls, prompting Ning Feng to wonder about the sudden turn of events. Feeling a potent energy spreading, he glimpsed ground fissures, speculating whether they were effects of the forbidden curse or traps. With the urgency to escape unnoticed, he activated his scroll alongside the other students. Captain Zhu, insisting on an immediate retreat to the city, recognized the futility of confronting a monster of king level or higher without reinforcements. However, the sudden disappearance of the dark power left him in shock, fearing the possibility of the entity escaping the realm. This sequence not only highlights Ning Feng's unexpected rise in power and the rewards garnered from his encounter, but also sets a tense atmosphere of uncertainty and danger, suggesting significant challenges and mysteries yet to unfold. Emerging from the arena, Ningfing witnessed Kai Wai, informing someone that the situation had escalated beyond their control. She mentioned she would report immediately and insisted on silence from everyone to prevent widespread panic. Additionally, she ordered the activation of the school's defensive array, leaving only one exit open for non-essential personnel to evacuate swiftly. Ning Feng approached Kai Wai with questions, to which she responded with concern for his well-being. Assuring her he was fine, she urgently directed him to leave, stating the school was temporarily closed, 
and he should not return unless absolutely necessary. Later, Ning Feng sought clarification from Wang Yu about the unfolding events. She relayed that an unidentified power source had been detected in the exam zone, leading to the school's lockdown. Ning Feng speculated whether the source was the elite monster he encountered, and lamented the interruption of his test, especially after enduring so much to reach his awakening. Noticing his frustration, Wang Yu acknowledged the setback, and advised that while defensive spells were life-saving, they weren't conducive to solo leveling. She insisted on teaming up the following day. Grateful for her offer, Ning Feng declined, citing his ability to level independently. He was proud, yet cautious, of his dark, forbidden spells, wary of exposing them. Wang Yu, however, refused to take no for an answer, demanding his presence at the West Gate at 8 a.m. the next day. Ning Feng's attempts to dissuade her were futile, leaving him exasperated and contemplating how to evade her assertiveness. Considering faking illness but recognizing the futility against Wang Yu's determination, Ning Feng devised an alternative strategy. He visited the Yuancheng Exchange, hoping to purchase equipment with a basic Meyer spell to feign usage the next day. At the store, he was deterred from low-level spells by an attendant suggesting higher-level options. Declining, he emphasized his temporary need, resulting in him being handed off to a less interested staff member. After exploring various options, Ning Feng settled on a ring. He then inquired about selling his loot, leading him to an appraisal consignment room. The evaluator, Wang, recognized the value of Ning Feng's agility-based orange weapon, predicting interest from several clients. Ning Feng expressed a preference for a higher sale price, and after a brief call, Wang confirmed a sale at 50,000 crystals, with Ning Feng to receive 46,000 after fees, a sum that astonished both Ning Feng and the staff assisting him. Shortly after, Wang mentioned that they could immediately transfer the funds to Ning Feng's account once the formalities were completed. Ning Feng found the service impressively swift, mentioning his plan to buy additional equipment. Wang assured him of his satisfaction with the forthcoming recommendations. Outside, a conversation ensued between two ladies about Ning Feng. One, who had initially dismissed him for lacking wealth and power, regretted her judgment upon learning he had sold equipment for 50,000 crystal coins, a sum exceeding three months of their salaries in commission alone. The realization prompted a change in their attitude, with the previously indifferent lady regretting not serving him herself. After completing his purchases, Ning Feng was courteously advised by Yang to seek her out directly on future visits, introducing herself as Yang Xin. The next day, Ning Feng, equipped and confident, was relieved to find that the system didn't alter the spell attached to his new gear, thus reducing his risk of exposure. When he reached out to Wang Yu, he unexpectedly encountered her and her guild members, a shield warrior, a mage, a great axe berserker, and a cleric. An awkward tension arose, particularly after a guild member presented Wang Yu with a rare agility potion highlighting her imminent level 60 transformation and further establishing her prodigious status. The potion, a scarce and valuable item, sparked a discussion about its cost and availability, even among affluent circles. The situation escalated when Zhao Cheng, one of the guild members, derogatorily referred to Ning Feng as worthless, igniting a confrontation. Ning Feng, puzzled by Cheng's unprovoked hostility, considered settling the dispute with a forbidden spell. As tensions mounted, Ning Feng coolly addressed Cheng's insults, challenging the value he placed on the agility potion. The dispute culminated in a challenge where Qing agreed to acknowledge Ning Feng's worth if he could present an item surpassing the potion's value. Ning Feng confidently accepted, preparing to reveal such an item to prove his point and potentially offer it to Wang Yu as a gift, turning the tables on Cheng's earlier contempt. Surprised, Wang Yue was presented with a pioneer badge, an orange quality item capable of permanently enhancing attributes. Upon her inquiry, Cheng skeptically doubted the item's authenticity, 
given its significant attribute boost, but eventually suggested they verify its effectiveness. Initially hesitant, Wang Yue was persuaded to use the badge, leading to an immediate increase in her attributes, much to the amazement of her team, especially the cleric. Chung and the mage, however, refused to acknowledge the badge's legitimacy, accusing Ning Feng of deceit. Ning Feng, seizing the moment, reminded Chung of his earlier boast and demanded he fulfill his promise to kowtow. Faced with Wang Yue's questioning gaze and his team's desertion, Cheng had no choice but to begrudgingly comply. Afterward, as Cheng departed, Wang Yue attempted to apologize to Ning Feng, who insisted their friendship precluded the need for apologies. He encouraged her to focus on her transformation and her university aspirations, despite knowing he couldn't keep pace with her leveling. Expressing his resolve not to give up, Ning Feng received skill books of purple quality from Wang Yue, a gesture he appreciated despite their cost difference compared to the Pioneer Badge. He accepted them, knowing they would be useful once he reached the appropriate level. In the Secret Realm's perilous graveyard, despite low experience gains, Ning Feng remained silent about his true level to Wang Yue. Their venture was interrupted by news of a fallen necromancer boss's impending appearance, a rare and valuable opportunity for obtaining rare mage items. Encouraging Wang Yue to seize the chance, Ning Feng assured her he'd manage on his own, setting her off on the quest. Left alone, Ning Feng relished the opportunity to confront the big boss, prepared with newly acquired skills. He contemplated the limitations of his skill slots, acknowledging he wouldn't be able to use Wang Yue's gift until reaching level 15. He reviewed his active and passive skills, strategizing his next moves. Meanwhile, another team in the Secret Realm learned of the big boss's location, realizing the challenge ahead in the treacherous dungeon. They were taken aback by a display of power from an advancing team, identified as Wang Yue and Cheng from the Lion Guild, acknowledged as formidable newcomers even on a national scale. The cleric noted Wang Yue's increased strength, attributed to the Pioneer Badge's effect on her agility. This event highlighted the dynamic interplay of friendship, competition, and personal growth within the narrative, underscoring the characters' evolving strengths and relationships. In the depths of a secret realm within a perilous tomb, a forbidden black hole appeared, and he emerged, declaring the speed of the forbidden spell of spatial magic known as Void Step. This dark forbidden spell capable of tearing through space into the dark world and swiftly traversing to the target location can last for an hour. Shortly after, an eye hole materialized on the ground and the tomb's boss emerged only to be calmly informed by him that it was too late. The boss launched a powerful attack resulting in a loud explosion and a cloud of dust where he once stood. Believing him vanished, the boss labeled him an arrogant adventurer. Yet, he reappeared behind it, utilizing his spatial magic, expressing his desire to keep the spoils for himself. He then unleashed his Meteor Rain skill, another dark forbidden spell that summoned a devastating rain of fire from the sky, inflicting massive area damage. The boss watched in shock as the fiery stones rained down, targeting every monster in the tower and triggering a massive explosion. Using his spatial magic to evade the onslaught, he observed as the system updated him on his victories over various demons and warriors, culminating in the defeat of a fallen law necromancer. This victory earned him 50,000 experience points, propelling him to level 30. Approaching the dropped items, he took note of the valuable pendant and gemstones, despite the two skill books not being mage exclusive. Deciding to absorb the Necromancer emblem, despite its stamina reduction, the system revealed he could unlock the hidden occupation of Undead Wizard or begin the prerequisite tasks for the All-Elemental Mage occupation. Opting for the latter, he declared his ambition to become an All-Elemental Mage. Meanwhile, his meteor rain inadvertently affected the area where Wang Yu and her team were engaged in battle, causing alarm among them. Wang Yu, recognizing the danger, ordered a retreat despite Cheng's protests. 
Following their withdrawal, she found a message from Ning Feng, informing her of his urgent departure. At the transformation hall, Ning Feng's transformation at 18, coupled with his poor aptitude, surprised the staff. After registering his information, he was directed to the mage transformation area. Outside, the lady inquired Captain Zhu about the recent events, learning of the severe damage to the perilous tomb and the possibility of a king-level threat, marking the second such incident in just two days. In the transformation room, Ning Feng was presented with two transfer missions, to become a lich wizard by venturing into the Wu Mangui tomb to retrieve the Blood Soul Crown, and the precursor to becoming an all-system mage god, requiring him to enter the Huayang Divine Temple for the Holy Emblem, each with their respective challenges and time limits. He opted for the all-system mage god mission, considering it a mere prequel task. Upon confirming his mission details, he left the room, marveling at the challenge befitting a hidden profession, even facing an S-level mission. As he exited, another lady bid him goodbye with a smile, though he noted she was different from the one he had encountered earlier. Meanwhile, back in the perilous tomb, an excited individual informed Zhu about his first encounter with a member of the solitary shadow, remarking on their distinct attire. Zhu urged silence, reminding him that the existence of this organization was an official secret. He elaborated on the solitary shadow members, known for their rare hidden professions and adeptness in harnessing darkness for special missions. The lady, suffering a headache from the lingering dark power, reported the absence of clues and the evasive actions of the perpetrator, rendering their motives unclear. Zhu related this to recent reports of anomalies within some secret realms, suggesting a potential crisis. Despite her troubles, Kuang Lan admitted the difficulty of the situation, sparking a query from an onlooker about the nature of the culprit. Kuang Lan clarified the severity of the threat, suggesting a power beyond human endurance, hinting at a lurking, catastrophic monster. Back at his home, he, the so-called monster, contemplated his next steps after acquiring four additional skill slots upon reaching level 30. He decided to begin with two skills Wang Yu had gifted him. The first, Foul Earth Defense, intrigued him with its damage absorption and self-repair capabilities, highlighting the potential for forbidden curses to enhance lower level spells. He then explored the Falling Rock technique, marveling at its automatic synergy with his existing spells and learned Elemental Mastery Earth to boost Earth-based spell effects. Despite his progress, he still had four skill slots and aimed to expand his knowledge with new books. At the Exchange Tower, he encountered the lady from his previous visit, who eagerly offered her assistance. However, he expressed his preference for Yang Xin causing the lady to feel slighted, yet insist on fulfilling her duties. Yang Xin's timely arrival, interrupting her meal to attend to him, prompted an apologetic offer of a meal from him, which she bashfully accepted. In the background, the slighted lady stewed in frustration, misinterpreting his actions as a personal slight. He then focused on his task, seeking to consign his skill books for sale and acquire new mage skills emphasizing his ongoing quest for improvement and mastery. Wang expressed no issue with assisting him and instructed Yang to accompany him, which she willingly did. Reflecting on his previous sale of an orange weapon and now purple skill books, Wang grew curious about his background and decided to investigate further. After dining in a restaurant, he called for the bill, only to learn Yang had preemptively settled it. Despite his protests and their initial agreement that he would cover the cost, Yang cryptically mentioned she had her reasons, urging not to worry and leaving the details a secret as they departed. Offering to escort her out, Yang declined, stating she had another destination in mind and would hail a taxi instead. After she left, she directed the driver to the city's second hospital, silently grateful to Ning Feng for the commission that allowed her to cover her father's medical expenses for the month. However, their moment of tranquility was shattered when the car window broke and the driver was impaled, revealing a chaotic scene outside with monsters emerging from a portal, spreading terror in the streets. 
Yang quickly exited the vehicle and found herself facing one of the monsters. Despite her attempts to use her powers, the monster remained unscathed and retaliated. Just as the situation seemed dire, Captain Zhu intervened, eliminating the threat and advising her to seek safety. Zhu, observing the merging of the secret realm with reality, recognized the unprecedented severity of the crisis and the advanced threat level of the attackers. Confronting another assailant, Zhu was taken aback by the declaration of the man as a guardian of the power of darkness, a concept unfamiliar to him. Despite Zhu's efforts, the man's superior strength was evident, boasting at least the power of a third transfer or higher. The man's display of dominance and his conversation with a skull pendant and an entity from the sky revealed his subservience and the broader plot to use the city's populace as sacrifices. Amidst this chaos, Ning Feng, having just stepped out from a public restroom, was met with a scene of devastation and a charging monster. Without hesitation, he employed his earth spike wall, showcasing his readiness to confront the emerging threat, pondering the sudden turn of events that had engulfed the city in darkness and danger. He was grateful for the investment he made earlier in the day, purchasing a weapon that not only complemented his death magic with a purple skill, but also enhanced its effectiveness. As he stepped out into the street, he was taken aback by its corrupted appearance. He witnessed a man discarding a body, who, upon noticing Ning Feng, expressed annoyance at having missed some insects. The man attacked with sharp claws, surprised when Ning Feng countered with a shield, causing his arm to tremble from the impact. The man, stuttering, questioned how Ning Feng could withstand his attack, to which a demon suggested that Ning Feng wielded a power of darkness surpassing his own. The demon then remarked on sensing an aura from Ning Feng more menacing than death itself. Opening his eyes, Ning Feng shattered the man's crystal arm, leaving the assailant in disbelief and calling out for his leader, Demon. However, the demon humorously informed him that the user was out of service, leaving the man to fend for himself. As the demons retreated into the sky and the crack closed, the man was left bewildered, questioning the disappearance of his power. Ning Feng understood that mutants, individuals who gained hidden professions of darkness during their awakening, could harness dark power to become stronger than those of ordinary professions at the same level. However, once deprived of this dark power's protection, they became significantly weaker. Ning Feng neutralized the threat with an earth spike. Relieved, he could now focus solely on offense without concern for his defense. He quickly gathered the spoils and returned home unnoticed. In the aftermath of the city's destruction, Kuang Lan and a lady assessed the situation, noting the monster's retreat and the cessation of the realm's invasion. Despite the disappearance of two destructive spells, they were left puzzled by the enemy's objectives. Learning of heavy losses in the city's south, Kuang Lan decided to investigate, suspecting that Zhu's area was affected. Upon discovering the impaled man, Duen considered the fate of the man's belongings. Kuang Lan, appearing suddenly, demanded his identity. Duen identified himself as a member of the Cloud Realm, a secretive organization of fighters. He revealed that the deceased was a traitor who aided in the realm's invasion, leading to a devastating attack on their camp. Kuang Lan pondered whether the cessation of the invasion was linked to the traitor's death, while Duen speculated about the existence of a formidable individual in Qin Yu City, capable of halting the invasion. Duen then departed on a new quest, leaving Kuang Lan to contemplate their next move. Meanwhile, Ning Feng celebrated the acquisition of two orange set pieces, eternal glory accessories, suited for the fighter profession, but unusable by the deceased due to level constraints. This victory not only underscored Ning Feng's prowess, but also hinted at the complexity and dangers of the world they inhabited. Aware of the potential challenge the man posed, Ning Feng recognized the importance of his recent acquisition, a weapon enhanced by a purple skill that synergized well with his death magic. He contemplated the man's pendant, noting its peculiar appearance and mysterious nature, half-jokingly, hoping it wasn't housing an ancient god. Unbeknownst to him, the pendant served as a window for a demon to observe him. 
The demon, reacting hastily to Ning Feng's musings, ordered a swift severance of their connections to prevent their location from being discovered. The following day, at the city hospital, Zhu, recovering and bandaged, informed Kuang Lan about the young fighter's pivotal role in thwarting the enemy who retreated upon his arrival. Kuang Lan considered Duan's involvement, speculating on the identity and motives of this enigmatic savior. She acknowledged the absence of any extraordinary findings at the battle site, except for residual ordinary magic, leaving Zhu comforted by the thought of such a protector residing amongst them. Speculation arose about the remnants of dark power detected at the battlefield, leading to discussions about the nature of their foes and the mysterious figure's possible mutations. Despite Zhu's skepticism, Kuang Lan entertained the possibility earnestly. At the city's border, Ning Feng, expressing his intention to proceed with his job change task, gained passage and set off toward the Temple of Radiance, unaware of Duan's discreet pursuit, fueled by curiosity about Ning Feng's recent actions. Meanwhile, at the exchange, Duan's interest in acquiring a set of four transfer fighter suits caught the attention of the staff, who saw potential in aligning with someone of Duan's stature. Upon learning of an old customer, Ning Feng, potentially selling such items, Duan sought to trace this lead, suspecting a connection to his master's relics. Wang, connecting the dots between Duan's inquiry and Ning Feng's intent to sell, pondered the timing and proposed to verify Ning Feng's whereabouts. After Duan's departure, Wang shared with a colleague the results of an investigation into Ning Feng's background, revealing his ordinary lineage and late awakening, juxtaposing the perceptions of Ning Feng's modest origins against his recent impressive undertakings. She then raised concerns about the origins of the items Ning Feng had sold at their trading post, noting that a one-star professional like him shouldn't have been able to acquire such valuable goods. Wang acknowledged the issue, mentioning Ning Feng's connection to the daughter of the Wang family group, but clarifying that the family hadn't significantly aided him. The lady speculated on the possibility of theft, given Duan's apparent displeasure earlier, but Wang suggested the items might not have been acquired legitimately, hinting at Ning Feng potentially stirring trouble with formidable figures. Back at the Temple of Radiance, Duan stealthily trailed Ning Feng, baffled by the notion of such a young individual repelling a realm invasion, especially considering his master's defeat by the realm's boss. Observing Ning Feng, Duan speculated on the presence of a powerful ally behind him, but remained hidden to avoid detection. Upon Ning Feng's entrance to the Temple of Radiance, Duan assessed his seemingly ordinary appearance, suspecting it as a strategic disguise to avoid drawing attention. To maintain surveillance without being noticed, Duan discreetly marked Ning Feng with a spiritual sensing skill, allowing him to track Ning Feng without alerting him. As Ning Feng confronted and effortlessly defended against an attacking monster, Duan was astounded by Ning Feng's impenetrable defense, further solidifying his belief in Ning Feng's extraordinary capabilities. Observing Ning Feng approach what appeared to be the final boss, Duan found it peculiar that Ning Feng would engage a seemingly low-level enemy, puzzled by the encounter with a stationary statue that suddenly came to life. Ning Feng's mission involved defeating the hidden boss, the six-winged angel, within the Glory Temple to obtain the Holy Emblem, an S-rank challenge far beyond the norm for a first-turn mission. As Ning Feng prepared to confront the angel, the celestial being expressed its fear and attempted to flee only to be thwarted by Ning Feng's Thunderfall Descent skill. A colossal eye appeared in the sky, unleashing a thunderbolt that obliterated the angel, leaving Duan and Ning Feng to contemplate the implications of such a formidable power display. Duan was left astounded on the ground, witnessing the sheer magnitude of Ning Feng's world-altering magic, a force he hadn't encountered before. He speculated if Ning Feng might be the legendary eight-turn powerhouse, considering his mastery far surpassed that of his own master. Meanwhile, Ning Feng reflected on his level stagnation before completing the first turn, despite amassing a wealth of experience points now rendered moot. However, holding the holy emblem in his hand, he prioritized completing his mission, 
the emblem promising a significant boost to his spiritual attributes. As Ningfeng prepared to leave using a teleport scroll, Duan approached him, seeking a moment of his time. Ningfeng was startled, unsure when Duan had arrived or if he had witnessed his recent actions. Duan quickly tried to assuage any concerns, suggesting they relocate to discuss matters further due to the sounding alarm. In a secluded spot, Duan confessed to having followed Ningfeng, compelled by curiosity given Ningfeng's youthful appearance and seemingly unmatched power. He shared his master's tragic attempt to seal the realm invasion and his long hunt for the traitor responsible for exploiting humans as sacrifices. Ningfeng realized Duan's high skill level and contemplated the benefits of fostering a positive relationship with him, insisting on Duan's discretion about the day's events. Duan, recognizing the noble intent behind Ningfeng's use of dark power and his decisive role in thwarting the realm invasion, pledged his respect and secrecy. As they parted ways, Duan resolved to stay in Kinyu City, feeling an affinity for the place. The narrative shifts to Ningfeng receiving a call from his teacher, Kai Wai, who inquires about his whereabouts and signals a conversation upon her return. Concurrently, Kai Wai and Kuang Lan discuss Ningfeng's rapid advancement and character, debating the implications of his sudden rise in power and the potential need for further clarification. In a meeting room, discussions about the investigation into Ningfeng's capabilities continue, with speculation about the involvement of mutants in the recent disturbances in Kin Yu City. The conversation touches on the use of dark power by mutants and the cognitive costs associated with it, highlighting the complexities and uncertainties surrounding the use of such formidable forces. The old man elaborated on the consequences faced by mutants, highlighting the severe toll on their lives, sanity, and the potential transformation into monstrous entities. He warned that even minimal oversight could lead mutants to irreversible fates, stressing that a mutant's existence posed a king-level threat, unsustainable within their society. He then playfully chastised Kuang Lan for her speculative thoughts on a king-level mutant, suggesting she pursue screenwriting given her vivid imagination. Despite the jests, Kuang Lan maintained her stance on considering all possibilities, undeterred by skepticism. The discussion shifted as the old man announced the deployment of an investigation team to Kinyu City, urging Kuang Lan's cooperation and indicating the team might assume her duties if necessary. Her request for additional manpower from Lonely Shadow was denied, not out of mistrust, but due to current constraints, asking for her patience. The meeting took a sudden turn as a lady reported an attack on the Radiance Temple in Longbo City by destructive magic, fortunately without casualties. Kai Wai's attempt to link Ningfeng to the incident was interrupted by Kuang Lan, who acknowledged Ningfeng's registration at the temple, intrigued by the unfolding events. Meanwhile, Longbo City was shielded by a high-level barrier, instilling a sense of safety among its inhabitants, despite the earlier disturbances. However, the tranquility was disrupted by a crack in the sky within the barrier, through which a monstrous entity emerged. Observing the magic barrier, the creature mused on human fragility and their penchant for protective measures, undeterred by its presence. A swarm of monsters emerged from the crack, led by a monster who taunted the humans, proclaiming their defenses futile. The leader then directed its minions to attack the barrier, which surprisingly allowed them passage, leaving the onlookers bewildered. Amidst the confusion, a man who had been reassuring the crowd stared in disbelief, realizing the invaders were monsters. A guard, in panic, questioned how the monsters were breaching the barrier without causing any damage, prompting the man to notice that the barrier was indeed intact, leading them to question how the monsters had infiltrated. As fear spread, Duan remained calm, conjuring a shield to protect himself and the others. He addressed the man as boss, suggesting they were facing another high-intensity realm invasion. The man questioned if this was similar to the previous night's events in King Yu City. Duan, in turn, questioned whether they should intervene. When asked for a solution, Duan hesitated, indicating he was more than capable of handling the situation, 
but puzzled why he was being asked for a solution. Realizing he was being tested, Duan confidently told the man to leave the matter to him, causing a moment of confusion. However, understanding the crowd made it impractical for him to act. The man agreed to let Duan take charge. The landing of the monster leader on the ground took everyone by surprise. As it taunted them, a guard attempted an attack, releasing arrows at the monster leader, who easily deflected them with his sword. Another guard's stealth attack from behind was swiftly countered by the monster leader, who, with a quick backswing of his sword, fatally struck the guard. In horror, the guard exclaimed in disbelief, unable to comprehend how their attacks had no effect. Dragging his sword along the ground, the monster leader voiced his disappointment, having hoped to encounter formidable human adversaries. As the monster approached, the people fled in terror, raising his sword the leader scorned them as worthless, only for someone to unexpectedly block his attack. This person, wielding just a dagger, was Duan, who explained that although his leader didn't require protection, he could not allow him to face danger directly. Duan referred to Ningfeng as boss, offering to handle the situation, despite Ningfeng's request to refrain from calling him that due to the embarrassment it caused. The monster leader, amused, acknowledged that not all humans were insignificant. Duan then repelled the monster leader with a push, slightly injuring him. Before the monster could react, Duan, now armed with daggers, swiftly dismembered him, leaving the onlookers astonished at his prowess. They speculated on Duan's strength, suggesting he belonged to a high star hidden class. Returning to Ningfeng, Duan's actions prompted a retreat of the monsters back through the portal, with the archers gaining confidence against the lesser foes. Ningfeng praised Duan, who questioned if further action was needed, but received approval for his efforts. The crowd was amazed by Duan's respect for the young Ningfeng, speculating on Ningfeng's significant background. Duan presented the loot from the leader to Ningfeng, with the crowd noting the item's high value. Among the loot was a significant agility skill book for Wang Yu and a dark shield, which they planned to sell. Approached by a warrior and a priest, they were hailed as heroes and agreed to a conversation. The mayor of Longbo City, Kai Dongaming, thanked them for their intervention, revealing his unfamiliarity with them. Stuck in the city due to business, they discussed the situation with Kai, who feared they had triggered an alert, leading to the chaos. Kai offered a flight scroll as an apology for the inconvenience, a rare item in the region valued for its convenience. Kai requested they stay in Longbow City due to the thinning defenses, a request they had to decline due to urgent commitments. Duan's transformation was imminent, making their stay impossible. Despite Kai's fear and apologies, Duan reassured him and presented a supreme black card from the Yuan Qing trading post as a gesture of appreciation, stunning Kai with its significance. Grateful, Duan accepted Kai's gift with a smile, underlining the extraordinary status of both parties. The mayor voiced his hope that they would accept his request, expressing concern about potential blame otherwise. He inquired whether they could offer assistance to Longbo City in the future should it face danger. The response was affirmative, contingent on availability, which was met with cheers from the crowd, instilling a sense of security about Longbow City's safety. Following this exchange, they utilized the flight scroll, enjoying the swift journey it facilitated. Meanwhile, in Qingyu City's class transfer hall, a cleric joyously announced Wang Yu's emergence. Cheng and Wang Yu exited the hall when suddenly Wang Yu sensed something and observed purple and green lights speeding past. Cheng, curious, learned from her that she believed one of the figures to be Ning Feng. Skeptical, he remarked on the high cost of a flight scroll, doubting Ning Feng's ability to afford such an item, and questioning his presence at the hall shortly after his awakening. Wang Yu firmly cautioned Cheng against disparaging Ning Feng, hinting at consequences for further insults. Cheng, taken aback, pondered his fixation on comparing himself unfavorably with Ning Feng. The cleric redirected the conversation to discuss their second transformation tasks. Cheng, a bit deflated, disclosed his achievement of an A grade, falling short of an S. 
The Berserker Man commended Cheng's A grade as noteworthy, while the Mage Man highlighted the significance of completing a second transformation at 18, a feat attractive to premier universities. The group's attention then shifted to Wang Yu, who appeared contemplative. The cleric, noticing her demeanor, speculated about a potential low-ranked task. Chung, assuming a superior stance, suggested that even prodigies have their downtimes, associating tasks level with subsequent gains in attributes and skills. He offered his support, mistakenly assuming she was disheartened by a C-grade task. Wang Yu corrected him, stating her lack of distress over an A-grade, let alone an S-grade, which astonished her teammates. The cleric, puzzled by her earlier silence, learned of her unique situation. Her task had unveiled a previously unknown hidden class, 